something big is coming to Dirt Rally 2.0 in the spring of 2020 and in today's video I'm putting my detective cap on and doing a bit of investigating to try and find out what it could be. Plenty to get through so let's get started. What's going on guys, my name is Matinio and welcome back to Dirt Rally 2.0 where today you will find me in my detective cap smoking on a pipe trying to figure out what we could be getting in the spring of 2020 because last week the Dirt Rally um, social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube they posted this somewhat cryptic video let's take a look So as you can see, there wasn't a whole lot of information to go on from there. Of course, that's the nature of a teaser video. It's meant to sort of build anticipation ahead of a big uh, reveal or release. But it's not to say that that little clip didn't have some clues in it. And that's what we're going to be focusing on in the first part of this video, in the very least. So the first big clue, and a lot of people picked up on this very, very quickly, and that is the sound you can hear in the video itself. That very, very distinctive boxer engine tone that is synonymous with the Subaru Impreza. And the other big thing, of course, in that video is not only the sound, but the colouring. The gold Dirt Rally logo on a blue background. Very, those colours, of course, being synonymous once again with Subaru and their WRC cars. They run with the blue paint and the gold wheels. So, could this possibly be a Subaru-themed DLC pack? Honestly, I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be a Subaru-themed DLC pack. Purely because I don't think they'd have the content to sort of fill out a DLC pack properly. Two, maybe three cars. It seems a little silly to do a teaser video and build all this anticipation for a DLC pack that's going to have two or three cars in it. Because I think the only ones realistically you could add, I mean, we've already got the 95 Subaru, you could possibly say we could add maybe the Legacy. I'd love to see that in there, in the game. The 98 Subaru, sort of based on the 22B. Um, and there may be something from sort of the mid 2010s, maybe 2006, 2007, the last of the um, saloon car, WRC cars, before they moved on to the, the, the hatchback version of the Super Impreza. So, could it, I don't think it's going to be a Subaru themed DLC, but it could point to something else. And I've mentioned this in previous DLC news videos. So, a little while ago, I think it was sort of summertime. Someone sent me a message on my Facebook page um, and there's a link in the description if you want to go follow me there. There's some content that goes on there on uh, odd occasion. Um, but someone sent me a message on there basically saying something along the lines of uh, I've done work for Codemasters, what work that is I'm not going to say because they don't want any credit and they don't want to be sort of bent over the boss's knee and spanked vigorously for revealing Codemasters secrets. But um, they basically came to me and they said I've heard whispers and rumours of a possible Colin McRae themed DLC. And with this teaser, you could possibly say it could point towards it. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I think of a Super Impreza, the first driver I'm thinking of is Colin McRae. And vice versa, when I think of Colin McRae, I think of the Super Impreza. They go hand in hand with each other, they are synonymous with each other. Colin obviously cut his teeth and, and sort of... Um, built up his reputation as being the best driver the best rally driver in the world in the subaru rally cars and the pro drive subaru team became the powerhouse they that they would eventually be by winning drivers and manufacturers championships on the back of colin's fantastic driving so they sort of go hand in hand their their histories and their legacies are inexorably linked because of the 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 work they both did building that big legacy they now both have so could it be potentially a Colin McRae themed DLC? I think we've, there's a good possibility. There's a there's a good few cars that Colin drove. We haven't got in the game yet that I would love to see. The Talbot Sunbeam, for instance, I think he drove that very very early on in his um, in his career when he was a teenager. Um, the Vauxhall Nova, which he drove to a Scottish a one or two Scottish rally championships before he moved on to a Sierra XR4 4x4. I think he also drove a Group A version of the Sierra Cosworth. Uh, the Subaru Legacy, which is what he you know got his first start in, in WRC with uh, properly with the uh, with the Pro Drive team. The Citroen Zara, which he drove after the you know after he left Ford, uh, I think it was in 2004. And of course, potentially as well, 
what I'd love to see the McRae R4, the car that he was developing to be um, sort of a um, an everyman's rally car. You can buy it, you can take it rally in, and you can drive it home again, and then even also develop it and take it to track days and you know tighten it up a bit, hunker it down, and send it to, to a proper racetrack. So it would be awesome to see those things, and I mean. If they follow the same sort of pattern they have been with regards to DLC, the last piece of Season 4 DLC comes out on the 28th of January. Two weeks on from that, which we become accustomed to every two weeks to DLC, two weeks after that would be the 11th of February, which would put it pretty much bang on the button of being 28 years to the day since Colin McRae's first ever WRC podium, which came in uh, Sweden in 92. So could it be a Colin McRae DLC? I think there's a there's a good possibility we could be seeing Colin McRae DLC. The big thing that sort of to me says no, not necessarily no for the DLC, but no on that date is the 11th of February is way too early to be considered spring. And as we saw in the video, spring 2020 is when whatever they're teasing is going to be released. So whether it's just a case of they're just you know they don't have to release the DLC a Colin McRae themed DLC on a date that is a sort of filled with Colin McRae notoriety with regards to something he did throughout his career, be it a first podium or a first win or whatever. They don't have to release it on that day. They could release it on they could release it on Christmas Eve and people would still buy it. What did he do on Christmas Eve? Uh, had a few beers and fell asleep on the sofa. Who knows? It's Colin McRae DLC. Buy it, because he's a legend. So they don't have to release it on a date that's synonymous with something of uh, notoriety he did throughout his career. But do I think we are going to get a Colin McRae DLC? I mean, anybody could go to anybody and say, oh, I've, I've done work here and I've heard whispers of this and that happening. I could do it. I could say, oh, I've, I've, done, I've done this, that and the other for, for EA and I've heard they're going to shut the entire company down because they, their games are crap and their money grubbing knobheads. I could say that, but I'm not going to, um, even though I kind of just did. So there's no real proof to back this up. I haven't seen any pictures of sort of, you know, cars we haven't seen that are synonymous with Colin McRae. I think it's going to be something different if I'm being totally honest. I'm not saying that we're not going to get a Colin McRae themed DLC. I just don't think that this teaser is relating to a Colin McRae themed DLC pack. Honestly, I think it points to a potential year two DLC. Now, admittedly with this next bit of information, I am reaching ever so slightly, but the first DLC round of DLC, the first year of DLC, um, if you go and buy all four packs, it comes in the year one DLC pack. Now, to me, I wouldn't call it the year one DLC pack unless there was going to be a year two. Think about it. it. The first PlayStation was released. They didn't release it and call it the PlayStation 1. It wasn't called the PlayStation 1 until the PlayStation 2 came out because it's a way of differentiating between the two. If there's two consoles out and you just say to someone, oh, I've got a PlayStation. Oh, is it the one or the two? Oh, it's the one. Oh, cool, I've got the two. Oh, cool. So we know they're different. Yay. Ooh, PlayStation friends. Um, <laughs> so to me, I wouldn't call it a year one DLC unless it's going to be a year two. And the date as well, the spring date, they say spring 2020. If they go on what would be the official start of spring, which I think this year oh, for 2020 is going to be the 20th of March, that would put it pretty much a year on, bang to the day, of the first piece of year one DLC being released because it wasn't too long after the release of the game uh, which I think was sort of 22nd of February that the first piece of DLC was released and the, the start of the season one DLC releases start happened I can't remember if it was two weeks or a month let me know in the comments if you know but it would pretty it pretty pretty you know bang on a year on from the first piece of, uh, of DLC being released so there is that little sort of um, symmetry with it and, you know, the, the you know, a date that's synonymous with the first piece of DLC being released. It would sort of make sense in that regard. The other things, of course, that could point to a second year of DLC is, well, one, they've been on the social media accounts sort of going through the 2019 roadbook, which has been talking about a lot of past DLC, which could be building to a reveal of future DLC there is that again maybe reaching a little bit the other big things of course though and i've mentioned this in previous videos is they've done sound work for at least one car we haven't got yet which is the nissan sunny gti f2 car so to me 
if I'm running a game company or any company for that matter, I'm not going to go and do research and development on something unless I am going to release it. It's a waste of money, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of resources that could be used and put to better use elsewhere. So renting or using a track, renting the car, getting the sound engineers down, doing all the bits and bobs and get all the bits and bobs they need to do this work and get the sounds for this car and maybe scanning it and getting the, the look of the car so they can put it in the game. It's a lot of work and I imagine there's a decent amount of money that goes into some and an endeavor like that as well. So why would they do that work if they weren't going to release it? Of course, the other thing, of course, is the Spa Rallycross circuit. This being the official game of the FIA World Rallycross Championship, you would imagine they would have every single circuit from the 2019 season. And from what I remember, Belgium was part of that calendar. We don't have it in the game. Why? I don't know. But it would stand to reason that they would add it at some point in the near future. Hopefully in a second year of DLC. Because it's not coming in Season 4, which is very much Rallycross themed. So you would imagine that there could possibly be another year of DLC to rectify the situation. And I mean... A lot of people have sort of been complaining and whining about the, the, the first year of DLC. Oh, it's just stuff we got in the first game. Oh, why don't you do something new that we haven't had yet? Oh. And I mean, there is still some stuff from the first game that we haven't got. We haven't got any of the, uh, the Polo, the WRC Polo. We haven't got the WRC um, Fiesta. I would love to see those in the game. But a year two DLC would, I hope, appease the people that were complaining about the first. I mean, I get where they're coming from. I would have loved personally to have seen just all of the content from the first game, the original new content we had when the game released, you know, so the new locations and the newer cars that we got, and then have DLC of completely brand new stuff we haven't seen in either game. But this could appease the people who were complaining about it. A brand new season of DLC bringing stuff, you know, maybe some of these things that we had in the previous game, but mostly new stuff, new locations. If they followed the same sort of theme again of being, you know, for a year's worth of DLC being four seasons and each season being six cars and three locations, we could have 24 cars and 12 brand new locations coming over the course of 2020 and sort of the um, the, the early part of 2021. And that gives a lot of scope to bring in new content to the game. You know, Manx is a big one that I would love to see. I'd love to see a Talbot Sunbeam in there. Uh, there's lots of other cars. Like I said, some of the um, the, the Subaru Legacy, the, the, the 98 Subaru Impreza. There's so many different cars that you can have in the game for these 24 car slots. Hopefully none of them will be Rallycross cars. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's okay, but I'm not a huge fan of it. So there's a lot of scope there. But again... We're not going to find out just yet. I honestly, personally, if it were one of the two, Colin McRae DLC or Year 2 DLC, I think it's going to be the Year 2 DLC. That's just my personal opinion. However, I am very, very keen to hear your thoughts on all this, guys. So you've obviously seen the teaser. What do you think we're going to be getting? What do you think this big reveal is going to be? Do you think it's going to be Colin McRae DLC, Year 2 DLC? Do you think it's going to be something else entirely? Maybe they're announcing another year of the, um, the, the Dirt Rally World Championship. Um, let me know in the comments guys it's always awesome to hear from you but that's pretty much the end of the video so thank you everybody so much for watching if you enjoyed this you would like to see more Dirt Rally or Sim Racing content from myself or DLC news for Dirt Rally or other games then make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and if you do subscribe hit that bell notification button as well so you get updates for all of my new videos whenever they go live and like I said leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts on what this uh, teaser could be alluding to but again thank you so much for watching stay cool and as always, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.